Hello everyone and welcome back to Life Station and Base Construction in Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access where we have launched a shuttle that is bringing a rover to Life and we have also launched a science ship that is going to do some science around the Joule system and then ultimately become the core of our station at Life. So we are in the beginning phases of our grand plan but we have to see whether things are going to work out and there are a lot of variables. So one of them is whether the space plane can work and plop the rover safely down, though I suspect that we aren't going to be using the space planes for all of our base modules. I think some of them are going to be too big to put into a cargo bay, for instance. But anyway, we are proceeding with this, and this is carrying a rover. And then we're, we're doing the mid-course correction, and then we'll do the mid-course correction for the station module, and then we will see what happens in the dual system. Well, that dual periapsis is not where I was intending for it to be, but let's just focus on the inclination here. Oh, there's a lathe periapsis suddenly. I think we'll fix that when we get there. At least our inclination is mostly okay. Alright, so this is mostly set, and let's turn to our other mission. Okay, well, this one will need some tweaking when we get there too, probably, but that's okay for now. That's definitely a little bit too low for that, but uh, yeah, we'll fix that when we get there. So, once again, I would like a um, entry time. It doesn't tell me when we're encountering Jewel here. But I guess we can judge from the periapsis. So one year and 354 days for this, the station module. And then if we control our cargo shuttle, one year and 125 days. I mean, this is visually first, so that's okay. But still, the dates for the encounters would be nice. I think this will reach periapsis before the other mission will enter dual SOI. But I'm not sure. I'm just gonna avoid the Tylo thing. I don't think Tylo is in a good position to help us. Okay, a uh, correction of 26 meters per second. Okay. 0. 0.6 degrees from Lathe. Oh, um, we'll just barely capture and then fix all the rest. Oh, why am I creating two maneuvers? We can't do that. Forget that. I don't want to confuse you. All right. Okay, I, yeah, I think we should do this first. The other mission probably isn't coming in yet. So, let's go. And Jewel again. Capturing. Can't tell what moon that is. Probably too small to be lathe. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're lower than expected. Okay. I think we'll just correct that 0.6 on its own. It shouldn't cost too much way up there. And then we'll boost up, so just like that. Oh, and, okay, 19 days. Is that going to be in in 19 days? It still doesn't look like it will be, but let's keep an eye on it. No, it should be close enough. Yep, zero. And then at Apoapsis, in 22 more days, we lift our orbit to Leif's orbit. I mean, we could take an oblique thing like that. It's probably not a good idea. It's probably a better idea just to wait. Make sure that we have a clean tangency. Like that. And then... Time it well. So, one or in five up there. 
I'm just doing this directly. We could probably get help from Tylo to bring us lower. But I'm not doing that. King Leaf's help to bring us lower though is tempting. Uh oh. Hmm. Let's have Leaf Periapsis. 314. That does look really good. <laughs> 128. Okay. You know what? I, I'm not gonna ignore that. That's uh, that probably means that we can capture around Leif fairly easily, right? Right? Let's see. At least it's showing me the Leif encounter, so now I can actually plot this, right? No, I can't plot it. I want to know how much it's gonna be. Okay, if I put here, is that the same place? That's a lot still. So that's a thousand. But let's try the arrow breaking with this. A thousand to capture. We've seen that before. We've already captured around Jewel. Let's see if Leif can safely arrow capture us after they've changed the arrow thermal stuff. And maybe it can, maybe it can't. But uh, I don't know how much. We ideally want the core hydrogen tanks to be full and not to use that fuel. So the outer ones need to be dumped anyway. Okay, we have three tons extra. So what we'll say is that before we hit Leif's atmosphere to get it to air break us, we'll expend whatever delta V that we can to slow ourselves down, but then we'll let Leif do the rest. Okay. So, to that effect, what I want is a maneuver node to tell me when I'm entering Lathe SOI. Oh, it l lets me plot here. Um, which one's entry and which one's exit? Okay. Uh, well, no, that might be the main orbit. Focus. Yeah, it only lets me plot on the main orbit, not on the lathe orbit. I mean... So this is encountering lathe, so here. I just want a reference. So 44 days and 3 hours. Let's go back to the other mission and see how long until it enters Jewel SOI. Right, I have no idea. Uh, it says encountering Jewel. I guess I can make a maneuver node right here. Oh, 120 days. So we don't need to worry about this for another 120 days. Okay, back to the shuttle. On to Lathe. So we'll probably do everything with this before we have to worry about the science mission. We also need to bring it into the atmosphere, but... Uh, maybe we want... No, nah, well... Yeah, maybe we wanted to be on the other side in daylight, but it'll be fine, I think. Okay, we have saved, we're in Leif SOI, and we have to decide where we want our base as well, so keeping that in mind. Um, we need to dip into the atmosphere for now. I'll try 46. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's too light? to capture, uh, but we will be using some Delta V in order to help. Okay, I don't know if it's going to be 500 or more Delta V that we can get with just the outside tanks. And there's one reason, it looks like we only need 558 to capture, uh, but that's the reason, one reason why I would like, first of all, the ability to shut off the core tanks, lock them, and second of all, uh, set fuel priority because sometimes you have tanks that are would be in the same priority uh, Even if you have fuel lines and all that business, they would be in the same priority But you want one to drain first. They're, they're just peculiar situations where fuel priority and especially locking tanks will be helpful. I, I Don't know why people seem to think that there are no scenarios like that, but clearly in KSP1 plenty of people had such peculiar designs which is why fuel priority and 
the ability to lock tanks became a thing. Well, that's a... Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's just very... shiny in the light, that's all. Maybe it's not some very interesting place. Besides, that part would be very hard to land in. Okay, I think that's all we can use in good time. Okay, letting go of those tanks. This time we put Separatrons in. Can it turn quickly enough here? We're only really at 47 kilometers right now, but I think we've mostly captured. We have captured, so we don't need to be too, too tight in. Okay, how bad is it going to be? Very soon the atmosphere is going to force me to have nose to prograde, but we'll try this sort of re-entry posture first. Here's the heating. Oh, the solar panels. Whoops. Retract, retract. Actually, it doesn't seem to be forcing me down. We're going back up. No uh, heat indicators or anything, so that's good. So, uh, we'll probably want another pass at, let's say, 48. Uh, we want to actually probably land over here, because it's in daylight. And this stretch is one of my favorites, because it's long. <laughs> There's lo lots of space. Around here would be good. We've got to keep it equatorial. Because that's simpler. Interesting, with the... With the solar panels retracted, we don't seem to be using much power. It's still reading the other tanks. We only have 16 tons over here. It's still reading the tanks that we've already decoupled. Okay, that's 48. We just want some light passes. Maybe 48's too high. But we can adjust. I should have put some science on the rover, darn it. I mainly thought of it as a people carrier, though. We do have an extra reaction wheel on here compared to the previous Leif shuttle. So that's probably why we can hold our nose up better. Just want to stay in orbit. We just want to lower apoapsis, that's all. Okay, I think we'll take that. We're not gonna aero break again. What we're going to do is pull up the periapsis and then pull down the apoapsis. And we gotta pull it down so that we can land over here. Oh right, I forgot. The rover has RTGs. That's why we're keeping power without the solar panels. That's right. Okay, okay, finally it's only showing the 16 tons instead of the extra fuel that we've left all the way up there. I don't know how low we have to set it in order to land. It's a little bit of a question. Anyway, we're going to use 175 to set this up though. Okay, so we've saved just in case this is wrong, but we've got a lot of gliding capability and we also have the jet engines. I don't really want to use the jet engines just, just yet because we want to save all that for getting back into orbit around Lathe and then potentially getting back home. This is supposed to be a completely reusable craft that's supposed to go all the way back to Kerbin. So we've seen how that sometimes works. Oh, why is it going all over the place? Twenty-seven kilometers is what we're trying here. Okay. Uh, with a uh, seventy kilometer apoapsis. Because of its aerodynamics, this thing tends to like to bounce up in the atmosphere. It gets lift. We can sort of control that with our pitch, of course, especially thanks to the more powerful reaction wheel. And we'll see what we need to do about that. We're all the way over here right now, and we're going to be entering the atmosphere soon. So, yeah. Maybe this is a little bit too low. We'll see. Or I should have retroburned closer. 
probably my adjustment will be to retroburn closer by whatever angle we seem to miss by. But it could be that we make it. We're basically a quarter of our way from Apoapsis around our orbit, and we've got a, obviously a quarter of the way left to Periapsis, so that's our reference. I am gonna pitch down. Uh, uh, look at that. No, no. Don't make me go down too soon. I can't actually. I'm trying to pitch down as much as I can, but it's a little bit hard right now. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to like nose down. That's for sure. I'll just leave it there. We're going up right now, so this is going to change. Uh, that's probably serviceable. We don't want to go out of the atmosphere. That apoapsis is getting a bit high. Probably wouldn't, but... No overheating indicator so far. Still pretty high up here, but we're losing a lot of speed. Also, with the lack of canards, our pitch authority isn't great, because our pitch controls are too close to the center of mass. Well, also this high up, those aren't doing much. It's mainly the reaction wheel. I didn't really flight test this. <laughs> That's another worry. We just adapted it from the pre-existing one. It might be too tail heavy because of the engine. We didn't really... I mean, we saw the center mass and center lift in the BAB, but sometimes that lies. <laughs> sometimes that lies. Especially when you have a payload sort of compartment up front. But it looks like we can control this. Maybe. It was just, I was worried because I was pitching down so hard and it wasn't like nosing down. So, uh, okay, I think we're better off now. Okay, so we're there, and we're trying to get here. I don't know if that's the nicest spot on Leif to actually set up a base, but it's convenient. Uh, okay, pitching down isn't working so well now. Come on, come on. Oh, 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 not like that. Not like that. Okay, try and turn here. Okay, oh no. Oh, okay, okay, that's not working. That's not working. Uh oh. Why? Why are you doing this? That's the wrong way. Uh, uh, we're losing a lot of speed. Maybe you stalled out. Uh, my my rudder does not seem to be doing enough for yaw. Okay, you just do yaw, please. Please do it the right way. You folks don't need to do yaw. <laughs> But, I don't know if that's going to help anything. Oh, we're close to land. It's not the part of land that I wanted. Okay, yeah, we're tail heavy. I'm going to try and use the engine a bit. And then move the fuel up. Okay, we need to turn this way. We can refuel it later. <laughs> Let's just try and get to where we're supposed to be going. 
Well, I'm gonna try and... Well, the problem is the engine isn't very efficient at lower altitudes. Even right now, it's not getting its top ISP. It's at least getting a good ISP, but not its top ISP. I'll see how a landing over here might be. Can't see the land with all these clouds. It's tough to tell whether we're in a good situation for landing. Is all that bumpiness clouds or is that terrain? Or a combination? Yeah, that's a lot of cloud. Even though it's not efficient to run the engine down here, I have to. We're not there yet. And I don't know what the landscape looks like. Gosh, it's a misty day. Using a lot of our fuel. There's a shore up ahead. Okay, well, we're gonna try it. This doesn't look like the most stable land to have a base on. Seems swampy. Seems like Cape Canaveral. <laughs> Seems like there might be alligators. There are rocks. Okay, we're down. Okay, so we're making our base here. <laughs> I mean, it's a rover, so I mean, it's not critical critical. We could reconsider this. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna save again. We are going to open this. We're going to drop the forward landing gear. And let's see if this remains safe. Those are down. We seem to be sliding a bit. Anyway, uh, docking acquiring force zero, let's say. Okay, okay. Alright. Plane doesn't need to keep moving forward when its brakes are on. Okay. So now. This thing... Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, breaks off here. Every time. I swear it changed... It changed vehicle when I did that. No, I wanted breaks off here. So, interesting. These... The vessel interactions... Um, those were for the plane even when I had switched to this and had Bill... Uh-oh. Um, we're stuck for some reason. Well, let's take SAS off. No. Don't tell me the wheels get stuck on rocks. The wheels... Okay, the wheels get buried in panels. They get buried in ground, too? Do they not work off-road at all? Because that's what I'm getting here. Okay, well, let me just stop that for a sec. Back to the plane. No comnet connection. It was only because Bill was around that we had a uh, control. Gosh darn it. Uh, well, yeah, it looks like I forgot the... The antenna must have been on the cockpit part. But even its wheels are sort of buried into the ground here a bit. I'm going to 
go away and come back and hope everything doesn't explode. Let's go to the tracking state. Let's go. I need to go to Space Center. That'll be the only way to reset this Space Center. Come back and see if we can drive the rover. So far, not so good. Well, everything pops up, that's for sure. Crashing trajectory. Okay, we can move a little bit. And then it stops. Those two are going. This one apparently can't. Maybe I should let auto suspend now. Nope, that doesn't seem to make any difference. And probably when we come back we don't want it to do that. wonder if it's our proximity to the cargo bay. Does this have some weird collider on it? A weird interaction thing? The problem is we can't control the plane to get it out of the way. I don't understand why it's not recharging though. Oh, well, it's recharging slightly. Wait. Oh, that's moving on its own now. Um. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Fine. Can we... Okay. Uh, no, no, not... Oh, see, if it gets too close to the plane, it gets stuck. Hold on. Let's let it slide away. Okay, that should be far enough. No, it just sort of gets stuck. After a little while. I go away. Moves around. When I go back to it, it just gets stuck. Well, we can sort of turn a little bit. There's no rock here. We can't blame the rock. Do the lights work? Yes, the headlights work. Uh, we're turning. No, we might as well leave the headlights on. We've got RTGs after all. It's just forward and back don't work. Well, SAS is back on. I don't know who turned that on, but anyway, it's off and that's not helping. I mean, maybe if we put the landing gear down again? I mean, it seemed to rove pretty well with the landing gear down on Kerbin. Otherwise, the wheels tended to want to get into things, but it doesn't seem to help a huge... Oh, oh, okay. All right, all right, no, I've solved it. I've solved it. <laughs> sort of. Uh, we need to have the landing gear down so the wheels don't go into the surface. What? That's an interesting little rock. Anyway, uh, okay. There you have it. That's the solution. It's a very slow rover because it's got the landing gear down. Presumably that doesn't help us as far as speed, but um, they could be just not working. Bill, Bill's spine is really getting out of whack. <laughs> you can see uh, the suspension is not doing good for Bill's well-being. But Bill is happy nonetheless because Bill is finally moving. Okay, so... That's the situation. Now the thing is, with base modules, I wanted to move them around, right? I wanted to roll them around because in lace atmosphere, it's tough to do pinpoint landings. And I mean, without the plane, let's say we have a big module and we're trying to land it with parachutes or something. And we would want to land it with parachutes and then move it around the surface. Maybe other wheels would do better, but right now I'm not, really happy with the wheels. So that's a consideration. Next time we'll deal with the science station. We need to get science so that we can unlock the Mark III parts so that we can have bigger shuttles. And so we're going to use that mission that's coming in to get science using the science lab or space lab, whatever, uh, star lab, star lab uh, from all the moons. And then we'll park it in orbit around Lathe. Anyway, so with all that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.